In this video, I'm gonna be telling you about how I lost 100 pounds and how long did it take. So I wasn't always overweight, although I've been at different periods of time in my life, and how I basically attacked the problem of breaking it down. And you know, some of the mistakes I made along the way, some things that I would do differently nowadays. I'm John from BulldogMindset.com. On this channel, I teach you how to be a man. I teach you how to build financial independence, how to build the physique you want, including losing weight, and I teach you how to get the girls that you want and how to integrate that all together to have what I call the Bulldog Mindset. Click that subscribe button to become a bulldog and join us on this quest. When I started out, right, as, as a younger version of myself, I was not really like a super overweight kid. I wasn't like a super fat kid, but I was, you know, kind of chunky and I was unathletic, so I didn't have a lot of muscle, okay? I was very shy, very dorky, got picked on a lot as, as a kid, okay? And that's that's kind of the background that, that I'm coming from. In high school, I actually ended up uh, taking up some sports. I ended up actually getting in shape and doing wrestling and track, doing pole vaulting actually in my my and started lifting weights okay so i came back and i gained gained some muscle i was looking you know pretty good in high school never like super ripped but uh but but pretty good and then eventually what ended up happening was that as in my my later 20s i started to gain some weight i didn't lift as much i, I was still lifting but i wasn't really doing any cardio i wasn't running i wasn't really doing any sports i was eating more junk and you know what 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 ended up happening was that I took a little bit of break from from lifting okay and then I remember coming back to lifting I was always kind of struggling with weight I was like trying all these kind of diets I always wanted to get like super ripped and I would go on binges I'd go for long periods of time where I would just eat junk and I wouldn't really exercise very much okay but I was always kind of like lifting I you know maybe I went like a year without lifting I finally I came back to I'd, I'd traveled and went to New Jersey and, and did a job there and then I came back to Boise Idaho where is where I went to college I met uh, who's a who's a good friend of mine now uh, a guy named uh, Gabriel and we decided to start lifting together so we started going back to the gym and during that period of time I gained a lot of weight right I wasn't like super fat but I was gaining muscle I was benching 405 at one point okay and I was about 300 pounds right I'm about 240 235 now so I was about 300 pounds but I wasn't nearly as ripped right I mean right now I've got you know pretty uh, pretty low body fat it's not like super super low but I mean you can see abs and whatnot I'm not gonna do the whole camera thing but uh, but I'm you know at, at a fairly low body fat right now but I was 300 pounds I was huge okay I was benching like 405 I would do you know shoulder presses for like 225 for reps so I was I was pretty big okay completely natural shortly after that when I kind of reached my peak weight and my peak strength I was doing some dumbbell presses okay and some guy came up to spot me I think I had like 130 pounds right on on each on each arm and he kind of pulled my arm a little bit out to the right when he was trying to spot me up and it just snapped my my pec after that happened i basically i, I couldn't lift i went to the doctor he's like oh it can't be a pec tear because you'd be you'd be in so much pain eventually like a couple months later i went in and got an mri and they're like yeah it's a complete pec tear i never got it repaired by the way it was completely completely torn okay so what ended up happening was that i'm still like 300 pounds at this point okay and i'm not able to lift all right i was super super strong and so what eventually happened was i started to atrophy i couldn't lift i basically couldn't go to the gym i couldn't even lift my arm i could hardly even drive my whole life my whole like ego was based on this okay so i lost a lot of my identity in life at that point and what ended up happening was that i started to lose the muscle okay but the muscle was replaced by fat now muscle doesn't turn into fat what ended up happening was i was losing muscle because it was atrophying because i wasn't lifting and i was eating junk because i didn't give a fuck anymore like i was just like devastated right i, I couldn't i couldn't even bench the bar i'd go into the gym and i couldn't even take the bar off of the off of the rack okay to, to bench the bar I went to physical therapy and they're like yeah you know you should really get surgery but I didn't really want to get the surgery so I was I was just in a, a bad situation I started eating junk okay and not really caring and I gained a bunch of fat and so I ended up becoming about 300 pounds okay from going 300 pounds to being like a, a lot of muscle maybe like at 16 or 17 percent body fat to becoming 300 pounds at like 30% body fat 
it was bad. I lost all my strength and I gained a, a bunch of fat. Okay, so that's that's where my starting point was. Okay, and at one point I just remember, you know, I kept on buying different uh, pant sizes that were so much bigger. It was like, you know, I, I was originally like 34 and then it was like 36 and then it was 38 and it's 40 and I got up to like 44 or 46 pant size and I was just like, you know what, John, you're fucking fat. Like I was so used to being big and identifying with being big that I didn't really notice it until, you know, until some sometime down the road and I was like, you know what, you actually like it's not that you're big, you're not buff, you're actually just a fat ass right now. Finally, I decided that I was gonna make a change. I was gonna change my life around, and I, I was done with the shit. I wasn't gonna buy any more pant sizes, any bigger. I was not gonna allow myself, right? I was gonna have to stuff into these fucking pants. Uh, and so what I did was I came up with a, pro a, a plan, okay? And what my plan was this. It was really, really simple, okay? It was basically this, every two weeks, I needed to lose five pounds. I could lose those five pounds however I wanted, right? But at the end of the two weeks, if I did not lose the five pounds, however many pounds over the five I was, I would have to run that many extra miles every single day until I was at where I needed to be. Okay, that was kind of my plan. So two weeks, at the end of the two weeks, weigh myself. I need to be at least five pounds lighter. If I'm not five pounds lighter, then however much I'm over that, that's how many miles that I need to run every single day until I'm under that. It was kind of a good strategy because it had a good penalty involved and the penalty would actually move me closer towards the goal. The second thing that I did was I came up with a real simple plan. Okay, my simple plan was to just pretty much eat the same thing every single day. And so I had like a breakfast where, and that, at that time I wasn't fasting, I wasn't doing intermittent fasting or one meal a day. Instead, what I did was I would do breakfast and I would just have like an egg sandwich, right? I think it might've been egg whites that I, I did or the egg beaters on like an English muffin, like a, a low calorie English muffin like a high fiber English muffin with like, a, I think I had some kind of turkey meat or like, a, oh, it was like turkey sausage on there. And that was my breakfast. And then my lunch was one of these cans of soup that had like a hundred calories and I'd add a bunch of vegetables to it. And then like half a turkey sandwich on Ezekiel bread. And then for dinner, I would have chicken and broccoli <laughs> pretty much every single night. I, it, it, there was some small variation, but it was pretty much the same thing. Because I figured if I eat the same thing every day, okay, and I'm eating in a deficit, then it simplifies things. I don't have any problem. I don't have to make any judgment calls. And then the third thing that I did was I decided to start running three times a week. So I'd run every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, I think it was, or I might have done Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I, st I got a home gym, like a little bow flex that I started to do a minor weightlifting again because I couldn't really do heavy weightlifting. Uh, I should have probably done more of that, but we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So that was the plan. Okay, so that's what I did. And I basically just stuck to that. And every two weeks, I would weigh myself in and I'd be about five pounds lighter, right? I started at 300, went to 295. Two weeks later, I was at 290, okay? And it took a while, right? Obviously, to lose this weight, right? Because I was only losing, you know, five pounds every two weeks. But every single time, I made that weigh-in. There were times where I'd, you know, I'd be weighing myself throughout the week. And after one week of that two-week cycle, I would know if I'm on track or not. If I haven't dropped like two or three pounds at that point, then I'm like, okay, I got one week. Otherwise, I'm going to hit the penalty. I've got one week deadline. So what I do is I'd walk a bunch. I'd, I'd do my runs and then I'd walk for a couple hours or I'd eat a little bit less food. Okay. And I try to burn that down so that I'd be close so that I knew that when I weighed in, I'd weigh in under that amount. And most of the time, like in a, in two weeks, I would lose like six or seven pounds or eight pounds, especially at the beginning. But I just kept doing that. And I just kept on thinking to myself, as long as I keep on doing this and making this progress, okay, just five pounds every two weeks at a time, then I'm eventually going to get there. And I cut all the way down from about 300 pounds to actually, I actually lost more than 100. At one point, I got down to 190, so 110 pounds. When I was 190, I did not have python arms. I, I I had little skinny like my I had lost so much muscle mass. That was the other problem, you know, in in this whole journey is that one thing that I learned was that you know doing that kind of extreme weight loss and without lifting heavy, uh, you're going to lose a shit ton of muscle. I, I basically was the skinniest that I'd ever been. I didn't have six pack abs. You would think that 
you know, going from 300 pounds to 190 pounds that I would have six pack abs, especially when I, you know, was already pretty slim at 220 or 230, but it wasn't the case. Uh, the problem was that I started losing a lot of weight and as I was kept on losing that weight, what ended up happening was that I started losing muscle more rapidly and I stopped losing fat. So I was just getting skinnier and skinnier and that's a, that's a big problem with the weight loss. So it was a big lesson that I learned. But it did work, right? The consistency of just choosing that, having the penalty, which I never actually had to run any extra miles because I always made it. Um, and and having that, that long-term mindset of all I'm gonna have to do is, is do this and then every two weeks at a time, I only took it as a two week block, my whole goal for the two weeks was to reach that that point of losing that five pounds and I spent that that time you know figuring it out right I, how am I going to get to that how am I going to do this I had a routine I had a plan right I had this stuff planned out ahead of time that's what created that success for me whereas I think a lot of people when they go on diet programs or they're trying to lose weight they don't really have a plan they don't really have a goal they don't really know what they're doing they don't have a meal plan they don't have an exercise plan okay they don't have a time period in which they're trying to do this it ends up making it a lot harder having little smaller bite-sized goals right if I, if I set out my goal to lose 100 pounds it would have been it would have been crazy it would have been impossible it would have been too dramatic and too too ambitious of a goal but instead it was like i took that big goal and i broke it down and i said okay every two weeks i just have to lose five pounds which is a totally manageable thing can you lose five pounds in two weeks obviously yes you can it's not that hard to do now with that said I, I promise you guys I would do two things. One is I would tell you the mistakes I made and then I would give you some tips for for losing the weight. So the first thing that I learned, like mistakes that I made, it, it does matter what you eat, okay? I, I was basically just trying to eat low calorie, okay? And that was a problem, right? The reason why was because because I was doing that and because I was eating you know, I was doing any kind of fasting, I lost a ton of muscle. So even though I lost a lot of weight, the, the weight that I lost that was muscle was a waste, right? It was a waste of, of dieting, okay? At some point when I was, you know, really overweight, when I was higher up there, I lost a big percentage of fat, but I started to lose more and more muscle. And I kept on thinking that, you know, I, that's why I kept on getting leaner. I originally only wanted to get down to like maybe 210 or 220. But when I got there, I didn't have the abs that I want. I could see some abs, but it wasn't the six pack abs I want. I wasn't quite as cut as I wanted to be. And so I kept on trying to lose weight. And the more that I lost, the more muscle I lost and the less fat that I lost. And it got to the point where it was just ridiculous where I couldn't really lose any more weight. If I were to do it today, I would do the one meal a day, like the fasting that I'm, I'm doing now and doing fasting periods, which are actually gonna preserve muscle more, okay? The other thing I would do is I'd keep my diet extremely high protein. Okay, it was decently high protein, but I wasn't focusing on that. I was just focusing on keeping things low calorie. So I was doing very low fat and I was, I was not really caring about keeping the protein up. Uh, I would also make sure that I'm lifting heavy. Okay, during that whole period of time, I was just doing some light lifting. I was mostly focusing on the cardio. If you're really overweight and you're trying to lose fat and you don't have muscle, okay, then it's fine. It doesn't matter. But if you're someone who has muscle and you want to maintain that muscle, you need to be in the gym lifting heavy weights, not high reps, but heavy weights. Because when you lift heavy weights, your body is going to be inclined to keep the muscle. That was a mistake I made. And I've done some cuts you know, before or between then, right, especially after I gained some weight after this whole period and I'd done it the right way and now I'm able to to stay, you know, pretty lean while and, and, and keep a lot of muscle at the same time, okay? But a lot of that comes from fasting and lifting while that I'm cutting. I would have signed up for something like a half marathon or a full marathon training program so I'd have something to actually train towards because when I was doing that cardio and I was just doing like three miles, you know, three times a week, it was boring it was more challenging than it needed to be. I wasn't making any progress. So there wasn't any sense of motivation to make me want to, you know, continue to pursue that goal further and to and to really make a difference, right? The cardio, when you're only running like nine miles a week, it doesn't even matter. It, it's such a in, insignificant amount of calories that you're burning, okay? And you're gonna be more hungry anyway, that it doesn't matter, right? But when you're doing like a marathon pr training program like I'm doing now, and you're running like 30, 40, 50 miles a week, that actually does matter. You're actually gonna lose weight. That cardio, amount of cardio actually does have a significant impact. Whereas, you know, the little amount for the effort that I was doing it wasn't worth it and I wasn't making any progress. So it was always just as hard as, as it was before. And now I'll give you guys some tips, just kind of what I learned from this. So one, 
if you're trying to lose fat, trying to make this kind of transformation, have an actual goal number that you're trying to hit. All right. What is the actual number that you want to have on the scale? Okay. Have a goal number of approximate weight, but also have one for body fat percentage, like measure your body fat percentage. Okay. And it, and it can be kind of a, a dual goal, right? Like you can hit either one of those. And, and so that you've got multiple ways to win here. I should have stopped losing weight when I hit maybe like 220 or 215 or 210, whatever it was at, and not gone all the way down to 190 because if I hadn't hit my body fat percentage goal at that point, I was doing something wrong. I was gonna keep on losing weight, which was gonna be muscle at that point. So I could have saved myself from that. So actually have a goal. Second, break that goal down into smaller increments. Okay, just like I did, right? It doesn't have to be two week intervals, but two weeks is, is a pretty good interval. I think that's a, a good one because in two weeks, you're gonna have, you're gonna basically rule out a lot of the minor fluctuations that could happen, right? In one day, you can be up or down a significant amount of pounds, even in one week. But in two weeks, it's pretty much gonna be, you know, where, wherever you're at, you know, two weeks later, you're gonna be able to measure something like five pounds. Don't make it too aggressive, okay? One of the reasons why I was successful was because five pounds every two weeks, it was a totally achievable goal, okay? It wasn't something that was too, too hard to do, okay? Uh, the third one I'll say is have an actual plan. Have a meal plan. It, it doesn't have to be eating the same thing every day, but maybe you have an, a meal plan A, one B, and a C one, and you just alternate between those three days, okay? But have that. Do the shopping in advance. Plan out. Know exactly what you're going to eat and when. Along with that, I would say do some level of fasting. If you can eat one meal a day, I think that's going to be the most effective thing for a couple of reasons. One, it's going to give you the, the, the effect of fasting, okay, which is going to... It's not going to actually make you burn calories faster, okay? But it's going to help you preserve muscle, which is good. The second thing that it's going to do is that it's going to simplify shit, okay? Instead of planning out five or six meals or even three meals in the day and doing all the shot, you're just going to have one meal that you're going to plan out every day, okay? Which is easier. It makes the whole process easier. Calculating the macros if you want to do it to that level or calorie counts, super, super simple. The third one is it's going to let you eat more and be more satiated. Okay, I like one meal a day. I do it all the time simply because I like to eat a decent sized meal. I don't want to eat just like little tiny meals throughout the day and I'm thinking about food all the time. Instead, I'm like, okay, at five o'clock when it's dinner time, that's when I get to eat and that's the only time that I get to eat, but I get to eat a nice bigger portion. So that's, that's the other thing I would say about that. If you already have muscle, okay, a significant amount of muscle and you're going through this kind of fat loss, then lift weights and lift heavy, okay? But if you don't have a significant amount of muscle, then forget about the weights. Don't even try. It's not even worth the time, okay? Lose the fat first. Get down to maybe like, you know, for guys, like 12, 13% body fat, which you can do, okay? It's gonna be hard for you to get below that without getting some muscle, but let's say you get to that point, all right? Then you can gain muscle, okay? Then you can worry about lifting to gain muscle, and then you can cut again further and, and try to keep that muscle. But if you don't have muscle, don't worry about it. Don't worry about going to the gym. Don't try and do two things at once. If you've got the muscle and you want to preserve it, it's a totally different story. Do not expect this to happen overnight. Do not expect this to happen in one month or two months, right? Be willing to dedicate six months or a year to this to change your life, okay? To, to change your habits, okay? Figure out ways that you, this is going to become a lifestyle for you, right? If you start adopting the lifestyle, and you might go a little extreme when you're trying to lose weight, right? You, you're not going to be able to just live the lifestyle that you're normally, but it should be a variation of it, right? You're going to eat a little bit less calories than what you're going to normally eat, right? Uh, after you lost that weight, you're going to do maybe a little bit more cardio, a little bit more exercise than what your normal lifestyle is going to be, okay, in order to lose that weight for that, that period of time. But eventually, you're going to have to adjust and be able to stay and cruise because it's really hard to maintain. That's the other thing is that I learned from this whole thing is that it was easier to lose the weight than it was to maintain afterwards, right? I, I went a couple of yo-yoed a few times before I figured it out. Now I've got it pretty much dialed in and my my general routine is, is what I do every day. All right, guys, I hope you found this useful. If you did, you know, give me a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and I'll talk to you next time. Take care.